I originally found out about it when I was in high school and I was always interested in the math and the science part of things and I liked playing on computers and being on them so it was pretty much the perfect combination of all three. One thing that I sort of underestimated was the need for bioinformaticists. Um, Any time that it's mentioned in classes or whatever, there's they just always say, you know, you're gonna have a job after after you're done here. Go on to graduate school and hopefully get a PhD and then continue research. I like the genomics and genetics, proteomics dealing with protein interactions and their structures and functions. The introduction to BC Bio course that I took, which was 211, and um, it was co-taught by Dr. Cho and Dr. Gu, and in there we learned a lot about sequence alignment and dynamic programming. We got a, to know a little bit about Perl, which is um, a program used in computational sciences. The thing with bioinformatics and computational biology is that it's a lot of introductory courses in different areas instead of a large amount in one area. Other important ones would be uh, Computer Science 227 and 228, Intro to Data Structures and the Java Programming Language, it's Analytical Genetics, so it has more of a bioinformatics approach and um, different databases to search and how you would go about analyzing the genome. Medical genetics, it's taught by Jack Gurton, and uh, we've basically just been going over basic information regarding genetics and how it affects the genome and the different diseases that are out there. And I was able to do a mentoring project in the spring semester, and so I got to know the lab setting a little bit and sort of get my hands wet as far as lab experience goes. And then um, I am now actually employed at that same lab. I do things with cell culture, streaking plates, um, preparing media to put on the plates, feeding them, and just I help out with whatever procedures that they're doing for the day, reverse transcript days, um, RNA purification, gel extraction. Dr. Cho, um, as I mentioned, he, I, went, I worked in his lab as a freshman, just as taking a one credit course. And then that next year, he co-taught one of my classes. And after having had me in class and seeing me participate in his lab, he really, he thought I was a really good candidate for um, a job there. So he gave me a job at the beginning of this year and I've worked there since. So he sort of taught me new tools to use in the bioinformatics field and given me advice on graduate schools and applying for internships and he's been able to write letters of recommendation for me. Karen Dorman is her name and uh, I go to her at least once a semester, sometimes more. She helps me make sure that I'm taking all the right classes that I need to take so I'll graduate on time and um, She's usually pretty good about emailing me back and helping me with whatever else it is that I need, uh, studying abroad information or um, applying to internships, graduate schools, which one might be right for me, that type of thing. She gives pretty good advice. If someone's interested in bioinformatics and computational biology, they should definitely take as many high-level courses in math and science as possible. and. Um, even computer programming. I didn't have any experience with that until I came to college. You're in a computer science class with a bunch of computer scientists, but that's not really your field. So you have to take what you can and sort of realize that you're not doing the same things that they are, but it's still applicable to your program. If they can get any experience as far as overlooking someone, a research scientist, in any field to see if they like the wet lab portion with test tubes and beakers or if they like the dry lab more. <laughs>